Some men are just lying, manipulating, no good, good for nothing, horrible people looking to take advantage of you. And the reality is that I do not want you getting caught up with that kind of man. So I'm going to help you by letting you know the five behaviors of a man who lies. Hey, my name is Stefan Labossier, a.k.a. Stefan Speaks, back with another relationship and dating advice video for women. Like I said, I'm going to be laying out for you the five behaviors of a man who lies. Again, as before we get started, be sure to like this video, share it, subscribe to this channel, and listen, leave your feedback below. Let, give us some things that you've seen, a uh, constant pattern in men who lie. Now, again, let me make this very clear as always. Every man is not a liar. Well, let me backtrack that. Every person on the face of this earth has told a lie, all right? If you're honest with yourself, all right, you've done it at least once in your life. I'm not saying that it, it may have been as bad as some others, but a lie is a lie. I think everyone has done it at least once. But this video isn't about the average person who may lie here and there, which I'm not validating or approving. I'm just saying that's what happens. This is about the, the, the pattern of behavior, the, the constant lying, the constant manipulating, the man who has bad intentions, who has no desire to give you clarity and peace and be transparent with you. He's simply trying to play you. So there are consistent behaviors that these men tend to have that I want you to be aware of. And of course, there's a bonus thing I need you to hear at the very end that's extremely important. All right. So now let's get to it. Number one behavior of a man who lies is he can't tell the same story twice. So here's the thing. People who lie tend to be inconsistent when they're telling their lie. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people out there are very good liars and they get their story straight so that if they have to repeat it, they don't have any, any uh, uh, deviances from what they said. However, a lot of people are not great liars. A lot of people cannot keep up with the story they told. So when you ask them more than once, there's going to be variations in their story. Now, I don't want to sit here and say the minute, the second a man gives you a variation in the story, that he is automatically some horrible manipulating liar. I am saying it's a red flag. And if you follow my videos, then you know red flags are things to follow up on, to, are things to address, not to just cut them off and run. Let's dig a little deeper. We have to also take a, a full picture. If, if this man has been awesome in every way and he doesn't exhibit any of the other behaviors I'm about to list, because typically liars will exist at least two or more of these behaviors. But if he doesn't, ex ex uh, if, if he doesn't engage in any of these other behaviors, then it is very possible that this is just you know, an uh, isolated incident, maybe he forgot a certain detail that he remembered the second time, possible. But again, pay attention to their ability to be consistent with their story. Now, I don't want you asking ask them five times because then that looks really bad. But there's nothing wrong with bringing it back up. And, and as a woman, you're aware. You're very aware to the details. So I know you're going to be able to catch it if it happens. You just have to take an initiative to maybe ask a second time to regain clarity, but to see can the story stay the same. And let me add kind of a 1B to this. Not only can they not tell the same story twice, they lie about the little things, all right? A lot of people, again, there are people who tell these quote-unquote white lies, and, and they validate it by it being a quote-unquote white lie. However, there are individuals who lie for no reason. Like, they're just lying about stuff that there was no purpose in even lying. Like, it wasn't even like it was going to be a big deal. There was no concern. There was no need to, to give a false narrative. Yet, they still did it. And there's a consistent pattern of that. That shows someone who may be a habitual liar. All right? And for some reason, they just feel the need to create a story. Again, you got to find out, you got to address that red flag because that is an issue and that is a behavior of a man who lies a lot, all right? Second behavior of a man who lies is he's very distant and emotionally unavailable. Now, again, I, 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 let me phrase it like this. 
Is any man who is distant or emotionally unavailable a flat-out liar and manipulator? No. Some people are just, they have deeper issues. Some people may not be comfortable with you. Very possible. But what I am saying is, if he's a liar, he's typically not the most open and transparent person. He's typically going to be very distant, very secretive, all right? He's going to show this behavior. And again, like I said, the uh, a liar is going to typically show at least two or more of these behaviors. So it's one thing for him to just be emotionally unavailable and distant, which the arguments can still be made if he's doing that, liar or not, while you're dealing with him. Because you can't have a great relationship or a successful, healthy relationship with a man who's emotionally unavailable and a man who's very distant. So regardless, that's a red flag, needs to be addressed. And if it can't be corrected, you're going to have to walk away. But in regards specifically to him being a liar and a manipulator, again, liars and manipulators do engage in this, in this emotion, emotional unavailability because it makes it easier. Basically, the less I let you in, the less I have to lie about the less I have to even come up with different stories. It's easier just to shut you out and, and keep things in secret so I don't have to try to explain it. And then when you try to ask me, why don't you let me in, I can deflect, I can throw all kinds of different stories at you. I can somehow still end up with not letting you in. And that still shows that that's an individual who, when he is a liar, that is a typical behavior he will engage in. So be mindful of that. But again, address it, address it, address it. Third on this list of behaviors of a man who lies, before I give you the third one, real quick, he's lying, sis. <laughs> perfect book for this video, makes perfect sense. Get your copy, link below in the description or in the comments section, first one that you'll see down there. Women are loving the book, finding it extremely helpful. It breaks down a lot of different scenarios that women have gone through and understanding the lies, understanding how to handle it, and it goes a lot more in depth than that. So again, he's lying, sis, check it out. So back to number three. He doesn't take personal accountability. Listen, liars and manipulators do not hold themselves accountable. They got every excuse in the book. They're always making it about it's this, it's that, it's this person. It's never them. All right. They don't want to have to face themselves in the mirror because, again, a liar and a manipulator is trying to hide, trying to hide from reality, trying to hide from any consequences, trying to hide from any work that they're going to have to do to make anything better. So when you notice that this man never takes accountability, this is a huge red flag. And again, is it possible for, for a guy who's always saying it's this one's fault, that one. You know what? I want to say it's possible that he's not going to be a liar, but it's just not likely because at some point, they're going to have to twist the story to still make them be the victim. They're going to have to give false details so that they can deflect from this issue. That type of behavior leads to, even if their initial intention wasn't to lie, it is hard because if you're going to be honest, then you can find fault in what you did. If you're going to be honest, you can see where you can improve. But if you don't want to face those facts, you're going to have to bring lies. You're going to have to twist the story. That's just the way it goes. So when you see that he never takes personal accountability, that is the behavior of a man who lies and it needs to be addressed. So now that brings me to number four on this list. He's quick to turn the tables on you. So like I said, he doesn't take personal accountability. It's always about someone else. So then what happens is when you try to address him, he flips it on you. So this reminds me of a story real quick. I got to talk about this where I remember there was a guy I knew. All right. This was many years ago. So don't judge me. But anyways, the guy had a girlfriend and I didn't know what he was doing. All right. But it turned out. She, she found out he was running these streets, cheating, acting a fool. She calls him up, all right? He's at my house. She's, he's talking to her on the phone, and he, she's going in on him about the whole situation. But then next thing you know, he kind of walks away. I'm doing my own thing. But next thing you know, I hear him going off on her, all right? So now this whole conversation has switched to him being angry with her, him talking to her all kinds of ways. And by the end of the conversation, she's apologizing to him. 
But here's the kicker. When they hung up the phone, the first thing that man did was look at me and laugh. He knew exactly what he was doing. Liars and manipulators are fully aware. And again, that whole turn the tables on you, that is a huge behavior of a man who is a liar and a manipulator. He knows how to somehow make it your fault. How now, well, you did this wrong. Now it's on you so that he can take the spotlight off of him. It is classic deflection. And the sad thing is it works if you are not as aware as a woman. So let me just give you this quick tip if you ever find yourself in a situation where someone's trying to turn the tables on you. Don't fight them on what they're trying to now put on you. Stick to the script of what you call them about. And if they won't, do not continue the conversation. See, the mistake that people make in those situations is that now you actually get caught up in trying to defend yourself. And if the liar is good, they know how to keep their foot on your neck so that you keep having to fight back, fight back, fight back, and you lose all track of what the whole conversation was really about. And the fact that they were the one that were in the wrong and you were addressing them first. So once you catch that they're trying to put you in a position of defending yourself, when you know you genuinely were not in the wrong. It's different if you actually were in the wrong. That's a whole other conversation. But if you know you were genuinely not in the wrong and that you were, you were addressing this properly, all right, and you now see they're trying to flip it, you got to stop the conversation. Do not allow them to have that and let it be known if they're unwilling to address the issue that you are trying to address, that is your exit out of the relationship. Because if, you, if they want to allow you to address this issue with them, how can you ever build something healthy with them? How can you ever be happy here? How can you ever have peace? Because you're never going to get your feelings heard. You're never going to get the issues addressed. You're never going to get anything resolved. And so it's, it's a clear sign you're dealing with a liar and a clear sign you're with the wrong man and in the wrong relationship. So end it all together. Now, this all brings me to number five on this list. And we kind of already touched on it, but let's talk about it again. He's extremely defensive. So again, when we talk about turning the tables, we talk about not taking accountability. This all plays into him always being defensive. He does not take any level of criticism well. Even when you try to be nice and sweet, he takes it the wrong way. He fights back, pushes back. Now listen, don't get me wrong. If you speak to someone in an attacking manner, it is human nature to be defensive in that way. So you have to be mindful of how you're speaking to someone, how you're expressing yourself to that man. And that, that goes for anyone. If I was speaking to men, I would tell them the same thing. Anytime someone feels attacked, genuinely, they're going to become defensive. However, if you express yourself in a calm and loving manner and they're still getting defensive, a liar use that, uses that defensiveness as a defense mechanism. They use, it, use that to then deflect, to then turn the tables, to now introduce anger into the situation to, again, make you lose track of what this whole conversation was really about. It's, it's easy to manipulate people with anger, uh, 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 with, with all this negative energy to get you to back down and stop coming at him with, with what you're trying to address. So you got to notice when he's always defensive and unwilling to just hear you out, unwilling to take constructive criticism, unwilling to welcome you expressing your feelings in a calm and loving manner, and that's always important, calm and loving manner, then that, again, is a behavior of a man who lies, all right? Now, again, one more time, get your copy of He's Lying Sis, he'slyingsis.com, or click the links in the description. But let me give you that last one I said I wanted to mention to you. And this isn't about the man's behavior. This is just a message I need you to hear. Trust your intuition. At the end of the day, I can lay out for you all these behaviors. I can lay out for you even some more behaviors. And, and again, I remind you, I want you to address it, not just cut them off the first sight of anything wrong. However, your intuition knows best. The reality is that so many women have found themselves in the wrong relationship because they ignored their intuition. So many women have found themselves wasting their time with a man that they knew from hell, conversation number one, that he wasn't it because you ignored your intuition. Women are in marriages feeling stuck 
because they ignore their intuition. Women have baby fathers who they hate. I hate to use that word, but it is what it is because they ignore their intuition. There are so many ramifications, so many negative consequences of simply ignoring what you sense from within. Now, let me make something really clear. The difference between intuition and fear. Fear is your logic in your mind breaking things down. All right. And you're analyzing and you're coming to your conclusions. Intuition needs no logic, needs no analyzation. It just feels, it just knows, it just senses. So sometimes the man may have not done anything wrong, but if in your spirit, you just know you don't belong there, listen. All right. And, and, and sometimes this may sound crazy. Sometimes he may make a mistake. He may do something wrong, but your intuition is telling you, don't walk away from this man yet. And I'm going to tell you to listen to that. As crazy as that may sound, because it may, be a, it may be your spirit telling you this is a fixable issue. But you don't want to let your fear dictate your actions. You don't want to let your fear dictate how you approach this situation and which way you go with this. You want to make sure you tap into your intuition and to go even deeper than that, which I believe is all connected, talk to God. Pray about it. Ask God, should you be dealing with this man? Ask God if there's any more digging that needs to be done. Ask God how to handle the situation. If you believe in God and you uh, include God in other aspects of your life, then don't, uh, don't, don't leave him out of your relationships. Don't leave him out of your dating life. If anything, you need him even more than ever in those aspects of, of your life. So please, Talk to God, pray, listen to your intuition, and let that guide you more than anything. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here, and I'll see you there. The reality is this. If he's saying, let's go with the flow, that's saying there is no vision, there is no plan in this situation. There is no intention with this situation, at least not what he wants to convey to you. That